In this video, we're going to be looking at priority queues and how we can represent them using the heap abstract data type. So we've already seen the queue abstract data type, and we've seen how uh, such a data structure would require that uh, whatever element is uh, enqueued first, okay, turns out to be the element that's dequeued first. So it's a FIFO data structure, first in, first out. First element that comes in and ends up being the one that will spend most time in the queue is the element that we're going to be retrieved once we want to remove an element. So this is a, a, a queue abstract data type. Now a priority queue will not um, will also operate in the same manner except that it will not base its decision of which element to take out on, on the time it has spent in the list but rather on some other criteria that we're going to be defining. So for example in a hospital if you had a queue you won't be addressing the needs of patients based on whoever came in first. Rather, you're going to be addressing it based on some other criteria, such as the urgency of the situation of the patient. So, we're going to we're going to be able to assign pri priorities to the the elements that come into our queue, and this is why we call it a priority queue. Now, how are we going to represent it? We could we have three choices. We can do it using a sorted list. So we would have a list, like a linked list or an array. And this list would maintain a certain order such that every time we add an element associated with a certain priority, it would be inserted in its proper place uh, in that list. And then when you retrieve an element, you would hopefully have them all sorted in their proper priority order, and you are also, you all, uh, all you have to do is just retrieve the element that happens to be at the head. The only problem with that is this, is that every time we're going to be inserting a new element, and if we have a large uh, uh, list of elements, then potentially we can run into a case where we have to, uh, the sorting of that element that we just added uh, takes up a lot of time, even big O of n. So it's really not a good idea. A better implementation would be to use a binary search tree. And a binary search tree, um, if you remember, maintain a certain order such that um, finding the minimum is usually pretty fast. It's big O of log n uh, base 2 because all you're doing, because it maintains an order, you will look at the first element, then if, if you're, the, the element you're looking for is less than the root, then you know that it has to be in the left subtree. So you're going to discard everything that comes to the right, so you've essentially eliminated part of the tree and you don't have to consider it anymore. So you're saving yourself some time. But the only problem with this uh, is, is that uh, we might end up with really long paths. So suppose that we had a, a, a long tree, a tree which had multiple nodes here, and uh, and there were there was nothing on the right. Remember, we actually looked at this case before. We would uh, and we were trying to find the minimum. The minimum element would be right here. So we would end up going through all four elements to find the minimum. So we would. Our, our algorithm would degrade to a big O of n, so we didn't really improve. The solution to our problem would be a heap, and here's how we define a heap. A heap is a complete binary tree. So it's a binary tree, we've already seen what it is, a binary tree can have, uh, a node in a binary tree can have a maximum of two children, and a complete binary tree uh, is, is, is a tree such that all of its levels are full, except the very last one. So this would qualify as a complete binary tree because all of the levels are full, except for example we might have some elements at the very last level, but in this case, um, if we're talking about the last level, the condition for it is that all the nodes are all pushed to the left. So we can't have a node right here. This, this won't qualify as a complete binary tree. We must have all of the nodes um, pushed to the left. And this would qualify as a complete binary tree. All the levels are full except for the last one where all of the nodes on the last level are pushed to the left. And, and this, this is very helpful because this will prevent us the case where such a thing might arise, where we have all of our nodes to the left side. Then this is the first, the, uh, this first element of the definition of a heap. So it, it is a complete binary tree. Second thing is that all the nodes are comparable, just like in a, a BST binary search tree. And finally, instead of having uh, the... in a binary search tree, remember, we had... if we had something like that, then we knew that this element is less than that element, and that element is larger than that element. So we went in this order. Well, in a heap, it won't be this way. You would have the parent is always less than its children. So the parent is always less than its children. 